You've likely seen this intersection, dubbed Shibuya Scramble, in TV shows, movies, and in news reports. Many people visiting Tokyo head to see the scramble and the busy shopping street that waits on the other side. But today, I'd like to lure you to a different side of Shibuya as I explore along the inner city stream and railroad tracks. I'll be walking through a few different districts in Tokyo, sharing some of my favorite shops, back streets, and filming locations as I aim to end the day with a big fat bowl of udon at Udon Yamacho in Ebisu. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at those chubby noodles. Can't wait to get them in my mouth. But that sexy noodle talk is for later. Let's start at the beginning. Welcome to the lesser captured side of Shibuya. It seems like this site has been in construction forever. Like honestly, since I arrived in Japan, it's never not been in construction. But I feel a fondness for the site. The organized chaos, the multitude of moving layers. Freaking highway beside me. It's crazy. So many layers in Japan. This is the practical side of Shibuya. You can get taxis and you can catch buses. And it's pretty easy to pass by as you hurry off to your next destination. But not me. I'm a sucker for bridges and overpasses. Never underestimate the awesomeness of being on an overpass bridge. You can get so many amazing shots of the city. You can get this incredible kind of different perspective of all the cars. Above me is like a gigantic highway. You can see the subway kind of like pitter pattering past. And of course, the main reason why I love overpasses is because it helps you get places on foot. Of course, we can get to where I'm going by train. It's like really quick on the subway, but that's not fun. We're going to explore. That area is the Shibuya Scramble area. This area takes me to Daikanyama, but we're gonna be heading on foot this way and I'm gonna be exploring a new part of the city that's been renewed and rebuilt and I've never seen it yet, so I don't know what to expect. Let's go. Heading to ground level reveals a slightly grungier side of Japan. It's still clean, but the underpasses are little treasure coves of local and visiting personality. For those of you that don't already know, I love collecting street stickers. I just take photos and videos. Here are some of my favorites. Spacer Namer Juice, Coast Deck, Coke Tech. I see that one around a lot. I also see Menace Star, but I always want to go Penis Star. And uh, only good shit Nero around a lot of different places. But the one I can't find is Crot. C R O D. I find it everywhere all over Japan, literally in different prefectures. And I can't find it now. And I want to yell out my kick phrase, which I'm not going to do until I find it. So you're all going to have to wait. What the? That's right, PP. Have you seen him? Just a hop, skip, and whatever the f that saying is around the corner from my grungy wonderland is the oh so shiny, newly built corner of Shibuya. We have arrived at the beginning of our journey. This is Shibuya Stream. So this entire area has been redone. And what's really cool about it is it actually attaches to Shibuya Station. So you can come up from the station and just be like, ta-ta, I'm here. We're gonna be walking along the Shibuya Stream River. We're heading towards Ebisu Station, towards that udon shop that I really wanna go to and exploring whatever we find along the way. Japan is really good at bringing things like metal, glass, vines, water, and trees together quite naturally. I know there's all this like really pretty fancy stuff that's happening all around, but like the back of the buildings look amazing. These are the kind of things I love keeping my eyes peeled for because I'm sure no one's like, come to Shibuya Stream where you can see air conditioners and vents from our chicken shops, but I think it looks really nifty. Says the nerdy art person. <laughs> air conditioners everywhere. They're so square. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm bringing nifty back, y'all. Anyhow, the walkway is peppered with benches and statues. There's lots of cute cafes, so you can post up photos online and make people jealous of your trip. I even saw a few food trucks, but they do close up shop just before 2 p.m., so keep that in mind. City and nature come together on one little path, and I was really lucky to catch the sakura in bloom a bit early, so now we're all gonna enjoy a montage of this gorgeous tree because it's so fluffy and so pink, I just love it. And 
there was also this um this building which um i need like if there's an if you're like an architect uh could you explain it to me because like i was really confused about it it's like got a whole plan Bidding ta-ta to the stream, I walk over to Daikanyama, a district in Shibuya that's been dubbed the Brooklyn of Tokyo. Now this area is a bit of a conundrum because on one hand you have these like really bougie boutiques and shops that are quite expensive and trendy, and then on the other hand you have these graffiti filled, stickered hallway areas that have a lot of local flavor, so you kind of have a blend of both things to explore. Oh what's that? Suddenly I'm in New York City? Hey yo! Hey, yo, I'm walking here. I don't think that's, I don't think that's quite how it sounds. It sounds a lot more like uh, G-Dragon. Hey, yo! Uh, I am not in New York. I'm still in Tokyo. Haha, <laughs> fooled you guys. I'm at Pizza Slice. It's one of my favorite places for describing a slice of pizza. It's like by the slice, which is so freaking rare to find in Japan. You can get entire pizzas, but you just can't get it by the slice. Aesthetically, it just looks freaking amazing. Like, even the outside. Look at this sticker wall. It's a natural sticker wall. People have come here and naturally stickered it. You know how much I love that? Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. You know, pink lemonade and a slice of pizza is not really what you want to eat when you're on vacation in Tokyo. But sometimes traveling can feel overwhelming, especially if you have to have unusual and new food every single day. So just having a slice of comfort from home can kind of give you a little bit of a reset to go back out and explore and try new foods. adventuring you never really know what you're gonna find these are one of my favorite types of dango dango is like a pounded rice that's really really sticky and they make it these little circle cute little circle shapes that's the dango part of it and then they um, roll it in this like sweet and savory sticky sauce it's like gooey 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 oh my gosh and they grill it and so it's just got all the flavors the best thing I can say to try to match it up is burnt caramel like kind of like the topping on creme brulee mm. Yeah, mm. every shop does it differently. So whenever I see a shop selling this, I immediately have to try it. Mm. Kanyama with a snack-filled tummy, I follow the railroad tracks towards Ebisu. Now one might think, ah, it's noisy and grungy, I'll just take the three-minute train ride from Shibuya to Ebisu. But you'd be missing out. I've discovered record bars, pop-up shops, cafes, all dotted near the train tracks. Okay, sure, you know, it's not gonna be on a tourist map to be like, come to this bridge and like, it looks a little bit rusty and crusty and it's got some stickers on it and you're like, there's fencing and you can't really get a good shot, but you can. You can squeeze your camera in between, you can set up a time lapse. Even in the evening, it's really nice. 10 out of 10 would recommend this bridge. Look, even this kid knows what's up. That's right, railroad tracks are the best. We've finally arrived in Ebisu, and if you look it up online, you're gonna find lots of different descriptions. It's a really fashionable area, it's super trendy shops, there's bars, there's a good vibe, expats wanna live here, people in Japan wanna move here, but I don't care about that because I'm on a mission, one that I'm not gonna be distracted from. I'm gonna get this udon, and nothing will, go oh my God. Oh, damn it, this is the one. This is crawd. Crawd is everywhere. Keep your eyes peeled. I don't know what crawd means. I've Googled it. I've tried lots of things. 
Maybe I don't want to know. Karad, damn it! Okay, this is a rare exception. I wanted to show you this crowd sticker. Nothing else will distract me from now on out. Oh, but look at these beautiful sakura trees. They're really perfectly in bloom. Just gonna get a couple of cheeky shots and then I will continue on my way. Pure focus. These are a rare variety of flower on my Animal Crossing island. Yes, that's right. I'm referring to a video game in real life because I can do that and because it's based off of real life. I really want to get a little shovel and dig it out. Unfortunately, my Wii remote right now is all wacky, so I'll be like, uh-huh, and then I'll dig over here instead. It's very frustrating, but reality starts to blur when you play Animal Crossing. You see this stuff in real life and you're like, the rare blue hydrangea. I can grow that on my garden. Animal Crossing. So I've made it to Udon Yamacho, and this time it's not closed. Now, Ebisu is known for a lot of different udon shops, so there are different ones to explore, but this one's been on my hit list. I'm quite excited to eat there, and it's located right beside the park. I aimed to arrive 30 minutes before closing to avoid the lunch crowd, and it totally worked. The menu is in Japanese, and if you can't read it, I recommend checking out the reviews on Google Maps before you go. It can help you understand what's on the menu, and the photos give you a sneak peek of what to expect. Stepping inside the shop reveals a really warm vibe. Lots of wood, lots of brown elements. And the shop has the feel of an old udon shop, but it has a modern twist to all those elements. Look at those lanterns. This menu, going more old school, reads from right to left. So the more basic udon starts on the far right of the menu. But I decided to order off the special monthly udon menu, going for buta shabu goma tonyu, which is thinly sliced pork, shabu shabu style, with sesame seeds in soy milk broth. I warn you now, it's about to get food sexy in here. Oh yeah, look at that. So delicious. Look at those colors. Ooh, looks like springtime in a bowl, in that milky milky broth. Ooh, I can't wait to dip inside and see what's hiding in there. Oh, what's underneath? What is it? What's hiding in this magical? Oh, I'll tell you what's in here. Big fat noodles. And I'm not talking about pH fat, I'm saying F18 fat. Look at those chubby noodles. Can't wait to get them in my mouth. Oh yeah, it's exactly like I thought. Bouncy, soft, hot. I just love it. Look at that broth. Luscious, thick. You think soy milk and sesame doesn't go together? Well, guess what? You're wrong. It's like having a peanut butter party in your mouth, only it's creamy and sesame instead that were invited. Oh, you thought you could hide from me, little tiny piece of pork? Oh, you can't. The shabu shabu style means it's so thin and perfectly cooked. It goes well with the udon, which is so fat and chubby. I know I shouldn't, but I start eyeballing the udon next to me. Look at it. So simple. So delicious. That ginger and green onions being mixed in. Oh, I just know that's going to be a flavor bomb. Noodles don't resist. They're just lifted out so beautifully. So chubby. Oh no. Deep fried tempura bits. Little fried, crunchy bites of magic. Oh god, I should look away. But I can't. Oh god. Tempura. Why didn't I order any? No. You temptress. I must stay faithful to the udon that I ordered instead. I smashed that bowl. That was really good. <clears throat> that was really good. I'm really happy I came here. It was definitely worth the adventure. Well, Udon Yamacho did not disappoint. I will absolutely be back again and try some of the other things on the menu. Maybe get some tempura. So I hope this video encourages you to go on your own little exploration to take your own Tokyo tour. Whether you live in Japan or you're visiting, maybe just, you know, get a little lost. If you're looking for the links to the places I visited in this video, I'll include them in the info box below. And if you like my sassy little milk backpack, I designed it myself. You can head on over to kingkogi.ca. I've got many more designs. Um, plus I need you guys to help me support my udon habit. I mean, like I can quit anytime I want. Like it's not a problem. Like, I mean, I, I could just switch to ramen. 